Fantastic. All right, let's make a formal introduction to our listeners. Uh, good afternoon, Anita. My name is Claudia. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., uh, from the Studios of Fairfax City. We're very humble, grateful that Anita Kegerland accepted our invitation to our show. Anita, welcome to the show. Fantastic. Very nice to be on your show, Claudio. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thank you. Anita, uh, let's go back to the beginning. Were you born like in a musical family? Or how old were you when you perhaps began taking, I don't know, guitar lesson or piano lesson? Because eventually your parents discovered your voice, but I want to see the beginning, yes. right at the beginning of your life, when you were like three or four. Yes, well, I, I started, my mother, she said that I started singing when I was around two. And yeah. uh, I was I used to sit on her lap when we were traveling on the bus. And uh, I was singing for the whole bus, you know, and um, uh, and then, of course, uh, when I was a little bit older, I was about seven and a half. Uh, mm. There was uh, a Christmas show in my hometown, Sunnefjord in Norway. Yeah. Uh, they were going to they, they were going to have a Christmas show. And uh, and and the Santa Claus, he was asking, you know, if some children wanted to come up on stage and, and sing. So I went up and I did a couple of songs and in the local newspaper the next day, um, they wrote, a star was born on the marketplace yesterday. <laughs> wow. So that, so that was actually the start of my career uh, in 1968 on the 15th of December. Wow. Yeah. And uh, and that was not planned, of course, uh, and it just happened very, very by accident. And um, uh, Father Christmas, you know, he was um, he was the one that uh, detected me, and he was also a very, very good songwriter. So um, a few months after this Christmas show, then. Um, uh, he wanted me to record some of his songs because he was a, also a very, very good songwriter. So he actually wrote some of my first uh, children's songs that I was releasing. And uh, just like uh, four or five months after this, in 1969, uh, my first album came out in Norway and was a huge success. Wow. Uh, it sold to Diamond. I got a, a, a Diamond Award for it. And um, I was only eight years old. So I was very young, very small. And uh, it was all very, um, uh, very unexpected, of course, because I was just a normal little girl going to school, playing with my friends, you know. So this was a bit overwhelming when it happened. Wow, and your your life been changed uh, dramatically. You couldn't have like a, a normal life, I suppose, because kids, other kids your age, will recognize you at school, on yes, the street, then, in the supermarket. Ah, that's a little girl who was on TV and selling music. All of a sudden, great. you need to grow up. And for a little girl, be you know, people wanted to talk to you, do interviews, yes. invite you to that's other shows. I suppose, right? And in the start, I found that very strange, you know, because uh, everybody, uh, after a while, they started to recognize me, you know, on the street. Yeah. I was uh, doing my first TV shows and uh, there were so many people coming to my concerts, you know, there were between 15 and 25,000 people coming to my concerts at that time. And there was a lot of people and I had to have bodyguards, you know, and... I remember one of the first shows I did was actually together with Pippi, Pippi Longstocking, you know. Uh, and uh, she was, of course, also very, very popular at that time. And we came riding in uh, in front of 23,000 people in 1969, you know, on this wow. horse riding off to st on, uh, um, to, uh, the, uh, over to the stage. And uh, it was <laughs> it was great fun, but it was also a bit scary because um, a lot of people, you know, wanted to talk to me, wanted to touch me, and wanted to know everything about me. And I found that very strange, you know. 
but after a while, you know, I, I, I started to getting used to it because then I started having. I, I, I can, I can all hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. Repeat it. I, I, I can, no, I can no hear you. I need. You can't hear me. No, 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 it's good. Yeah. Before it's I better now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is better now. Um, well, I was going to school all the time, yeah. and uh, and the year after I had this big success in Norway, I had a, an even bigger success in in Sweden and Finland uh, with a song called Midsommarlov, uh, which is in uh, uh, originally a Mexican song uh, called La Golondrina. And that was a huge success in Sweden and Finland and in, in all the Nordic countries, you know, being number one in the charts and and selling many, many hundreds and thousands of records. And, and before I actually met Mike, you know, after after uh, in the 80s, then uh, I was selling many million <laughs> copies uh, as a child, you know, of, of records. Yeah. So it yeah. was it was crazy. And then, of course, my big success in Germany. Yeah. So, by the way, how many languages do you speak, Anita? I I speak uh, no. Well, I speak Norwegian, of course, and yeah. and uh, and sure. Swiss, and I speak uh, German and English and a bit of French. We need to teach you Spanish, Anita. <laughs> Sorry. I need to teach no. you Spanish. <laughs> I'm poco. <laughs> Not very so, much Spanish. So I'm sorry. I can no, I can say a few words, but no, I can't speak Spanish. No, I, I, I was I was Spanish. kidding. I, I, I was kidding. <laughs> so uh, you going to? So um, so you were doing a lot of stuff early in your life when you're on. Were you people approached to form like any band? I mean, were you interested in when you were 14, 15, do work with other people from a band in high school or or the equivalent? Well, you were not interested. when I when I started as a young adult, then I had my own band, you know, with yeah. me because I I started touring. I had about I had about two hundred concerts in Norway and Sweden every year, and and after you know when I was ten, I had a huge success in Germany, uh, together with Roy Black. Um, yeah. And we had a, a, a monster hit in, in Germany, uh, selling nearly two million copies of uh, the song "Schön ist es auf der Welt zu sein," and um, that was uh, such a big hit that uh, today, uh, more than fifty years later, it's still one of the biggest hits in Germany. Wow. So I still do the big TV shows in Germany, in Austria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I have a lot of fans there, and it's wonderful. I have so many good memories from from Germany and 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 my time with Roy. You know, and uh, yeah. Roy Black, he was a fantastic person. He was a fantastic singer, um, but sadly, he died very young. He was only. 48 years when he died in 1991 and yeah, very young yeah, yeah that was such a shock you know because um i was actually living in england um together with mike oldfield uh, when uh, virgin records in england uh, called me and said that roy had died and that was such a shock to me uh, when that happened and to everybody because he was so young and he was, um, uh, well, I knew that he had had some heart problems. He had a heart operation when he was 40, but uh, nobody expected him to die so suddenly. So that was really sad. Yeah, by the way, you and speak very by, by the way, you, you speak very good English, actually. So Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Roy was a very important part in, in in Germany. Actually my 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 grandpa came from Germany actually my great grandpa parents. So oh. in, in the eighteen hundred <laughs> in the eighteen hundred there was a big migration from Germans families to the south of Chile and Italian okay. families to Argentina. So my great grandpa arrived in the south of Chile. So oh, my, my wow. mother last name is German so but I 
I, I, I was there with so I, there was was a big big migration. Right? So if you go to South of Chile, it's I don't yes. know, like twenty or thirty thousand family German families. So there are many Germans oh, wow. school in the South of Chile Fantastic. for that reason. Right? So was, way been... way before the way before the Nazis started caping South America. I'm talking about 1882. So ah. Oh. Right. Very interesting. I, I should right. read about it. I will try and find out about it. I will give you when I see you in Spain. I will give you a book. I will. I will give you a book. So yeah, Roy was a was a very important person in Germany as well. And you, of course, you are very famous. So it, yes. it's a difficult. It's a difficult nowadays. Sometime you go back in your life and you do you dream you realize man this is like a dream like i wanted to be like a normal girl like a normal person and now <laughs> well you, you, I, well financially and well you know. i was always i was always a very down to earth person and i always yeah. kept my old friends you know in life and i think that's very important to do um the thing with Roy was very sad, of course. Uh, we we worked together for 14 years, and it was fantastic 14 years, where we also did two movies together in the cinema. In in they were, and they are still today very big uh, classic films in in Germany and and Switzerland and Austria. Um. Of course, my career is so long. It's um, more than 55 years now since the start. This yeah. year, actually, 55 years. So, of course, there was many, many things happening. And during, uh, it's been my whole life, you know, singing. So, yeah. I, I sometimes uh, I've been thinking, you know, oh, it would be interesting to have a normal job. <laughs> to me, that's that's a bit exotic to have a normal job. <laughs> but then, but then I'm thinking, you know, oh well, it's crazy because I have my singing and I love doing my singing. Oh, you never get tired of people <laughs> invite you to concerts or or sing well, here, sing there, and go to different cities, and it's well, not tiresome. I, yeah. Yes, of course. It can be tiring if you if you're on a big tour, like mm. this summer in Norway. This summer, I did seventy one concerts, and that was a, a wonderful tour. But it was also very straining because it was very hot. It was uh, in May and June when it was very very hot. We had a heat wave <laughs> in Norway, and uh, and that was. Um, that was quite uh, challenging. But um, apart from that, I, I must say that uh, I love meeting my, my audience, you know, around the world. I get so many nice fan letters from people in the post. Yesterday, I got a lovely letter from Bulgaria, from a lovely lady there. Um, and I get I get letters from all over the world, Japan, Australia, wow. Canada, wow. America, everywhere. Yeah. You plan to write, you have like an autobiography or you plan on writing one or? Yes, uh, I have been, many people have asked me, you know, uh, if I should write an autobiography and um, yes, I probably will do one day. <laughs> yeah, you know, quite sure you will. You will sell them many, many books, man. <laughs> I, sh I think I should do part one and part two. You know, my childhood career was so big and, and also my, my adult car career. So I think it must be two two parts. Absolutely, absolutely. How did you end up... Um, so after Roy Black, right, way before you start, after Roy passing, you you released several records, right, When before, before Mike Oldfield entered your life, right? So... Mm -hmm. Um, you you were doing very very well. I mean, not just like you say mm -hmm. your country, but in Norway, Finland, and all the mm -hmm. Nordic countries. So you were yes, you know, very successful. Mm -hmm. what you did, man. So absolutely, and also yeah. in Bulgaria, which is very Bulgaria, strange yeah. because because I was going to Bulgaria to the Golden Orpheus Festival when I was eight, and oh, I man. won. I won a prize there, and I was there together with um, Josephine Baker from America. 
And uh, people went crazy there and they never forgot me. <laughs> so in the early 80s, uh, together with Uriah Heep, yeah. I was the main artist on the TV in Bulgaria on New Year's, New Year's Eve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that was all a bit bizarre. Yeah. How do you manage? I'm quite sure you you need to get like an assistant, right? Because you yes. get so many invitations to. Of course, you, I you have a, to, a manager. You know, I can not do this now. I can do it in three months from now, or, or yes, in the no, future. You, need a, you know, it's important to have a good team, and I've been very lucky. I've always had a good team helping me. You know, when I was young. It was always the record company, you know, that was uh, kind of my management at that time. Uh, mm. In the later years, I've been doing a lot of that job myself. But I also had, of course, booking and, and media management. My media management is in Berlin, in Germany. In Germany, yeah. Uh, yes. So, so I have to, of course, have people uh, helping me. That's that's important. So, yeah. and I have a fantastic woman called Maria Redekid, um, my good friend helping me in, in Germany, where I also have an office. So yeah. she's doing my fan club in Germany, and she's doing my website, and she's <laughs> running my German office. <laughs> so good for thank you, you yeah. to Maria. She's fantastic. Absolutely. Because so many artists complain that the record label, the manager, they're, they're terrible people, and they... They take all the money and all the profit. That, uh, mm. every I have interviewed a lot of artists, and they always complain that they, I, you always mm. say the same thing. You need to you need to hire somebody independent who can look at the finances while you're Absolutely. signing. When you are you are young, you want to be famous. You are eighteen year old. You will sign anything, you know. Mm. And, and of course, they, they will rip you off, you know. Yes, of course, that is important. And and when I was young, you know, uh, the the deals that uh, was made uh, when I was very very young, they were not so very very good. So I didn't earn very much money, but I had a huge success. So yeah. if that that um, had happened now, uh, it would have been a different story, you know. But uh, it was very normal back in 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 seventies, sixties, seventies, eighties. The record companies were really earning the big money, and the artists were not earning very much money. That's terrible. So that, was not, that was terrible. Mm -hmm. I would never allow that to happen because if you're selling no. whatever. Never mind ten million record like you or thirty, a mm -hmm. one million record, right? You should get several dollars per record so yeah. they need to show you the numbers and a percentage they will take from the show and all the expenses mm. so it's it's crazy and, nowadays that and now of course with all the streaming you know the artists are not it's very difficult to to survive mm. as a as an artist now so i'm i'm just extremely thankful and grateful that i have so many faithful old fans out there you know that mm -hmm. are waiting for me to come to do live shows and mm -hmm. uh, and that is wonderful that is uh, that can't be easy if you're a new artist trying to survive in the music industry that's terrible i have interviewed a lot of musicians from norway over the years and i, I always thought the same thing why is there why am i interviewing so many musicians from norway and not for Sweden or Finland. And I was told there the music, uh, in general, uh, art, where you want to be a, a painter, a musician, or mm. a songwriter, where they, they have, they go to a specialty school, and they have many school just for kids that want to be artists, no engineer or medical. So it's mm. a lot of things, it's a lot of money and funds put from the government. Mm -hmm. primary or middle schools for the kids to show a, a musical path or a, you know you want to be an artist a painter or whatever right so yeah well i i, I wouldn't say that that's the speciality no. we have here in norway people go yeah. normally to, to normal schools here so yeah. it's uh, I, I, my friends that w wanted to specialize in music they they always went to the paul mccartney school in liverpool you know <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, mm -hmm. they will go, man, Paul McCartney. So let's talk about, um, how did you end up meeting, um, how old were you when you, if you don't mind asking, when you end up 
before you, I think before you met um, uh, Mr. Oldfield, right, Mike Oldfield, I think you sent him like a, a demo tape. I mm -hmm. mean, did you, you, you his music? What, what, well, what was the was, motivation of sending him a tape? Well, he, he was coming to, to Norway because he was on his European tour uh, yeah. in 1984 yeah. and he was coming Drummondshallen, you know, which is close to Oslo, and um, I was coming there, uh, and uh, I met him backstage, uh, and um, he, I gave him because he was asking what I was doing, and I said that I was a singer, and then he said, "Oh, that's interesting. Uh, have you got anything to play me?" And and then I said, "No, <laughs> I haven't." But uh, and then he said, "Oh." Oh, that's a shame. Um, can you get something to 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 play me? That would be interesting to hear. He said, and then uh, he said, "Why don't you come and join me and the band? We're going to have a dinner after the concert, and then uh, maybe you can bring me something to listen to with your voice on." So I had just been in the studio and and done the new album. So I gave him a cassette, uh, and. Um, He he got that, and then he said, "Oh, I look forward to listen to that." He said, and the, and then um, a year passed. Man, think. Uh... All right, so we're talking about um, the day you end up meeting uh, Mike Oldfield, and you went backstage for dinner. You give him a tape. He didn't know who you were at the time. No, no, he he didn't have a clue who I was. I was uh, I was just coming to see him backstage and and say hello yeah. to to him and um, and Simon Phillips. They were both uh, uh, backstage and um, yeah. and uh, then I went out uh, 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 to have a dinner with them uh, after the show and um, and I gave him uh, the my new cassette. Yeah, and. Uh, And he uh, he took that with him back uh, back to England, you know. And after a year, he suddenly rang me. Uh, wow. I I can still remember. Uh, it was a Saturday morning, and uh, he rang me uh, while I was uh, hoovering in my flat in Oslo, and uh, and he said that uh, he had recorded and uh, composed uh, a song. Uh, that he said was perfect for my voice, and that was pictures in the dark. Yeah, wow. So he wants. So he wanted me to come over to to London, to to his studio in Denham uh, to record it, and uh, it went so well uh, that he was he was just thrilled, you know. And I was, of course, very excited. It was fantastic to meet Mike. He was. Uh, I I already had a couple of his albums, uh, and uh, of course I, I loved his music. And um, and uh, he was so pleased with the result that he wanted to make the video uh, immediately. So so we actually I came. Uh, we, we, actually, uh, we we either we did it two days later or or the same day. I can't rem remember now, but. Uh, We we did this, the the video to pictures in the dark, which uh, also Mike uh, produced himself, and he did all the editing. He did everything, you know, on that video. Wow, amazing! Were you surprised that he called you back after a year? Were you you uh, quite sure yes? You, I forgot. <laughs> It this guy who didn't call me back for a year. Yes, I was surprised. I was. Uh, I, uh, I didn't really expect uh, anything. Um, so it was, of course, very nice when he rang me back and uh, and said that he wanted to work with me, and that that was amazing. Yeah, and you mentioned Simon Phillips, which is I interviewed him as well, and uh, some a couple of years ago. He's yeah. he's a very nice person. Very. Oh, nice. he's lovely. He's lovely. I actually met him because he had this, uh, a concert in uh, in uh, in Oslo uh, this summer, so I went to see him, and we hadn't seen yeah. each other for a few years. So he was very happy yeah. to see yeah. me too. It was wonderful. Yeah, he, yeah he's uh, of course he's one of the best drummers in the world, but he's a very of good person. 
Yes, yeah, so and we did a few oh, live you. shows together, you know, um, yeah. when when we started performing with Pictures in the Dark, you know, we started performing in, in Europe in a few TV shows and, and Simon mm. came along to, to some of them, and, and which was wonderful. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, it's a piece of unbelievable man. <laughs> I, I wish I... I wish I had met you at the time because I wish I had known uh, met uh, Mike Wolf is one of my heroes. But you, you are, you are unbelievable, man. The career that you have had, uh, Anita. So, so eventually, right? So you, you went back to, um, yeah. He was a living. No, he was living in, in in the UK at the time before yes, he went to Bahamas. Mm -hmm. right? And then so living in in Denham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, you guys fell in love. Chemistry, three okay, albums yeah, together. Yes, uh, things started to, to happen, and uh, yeah. we became also a couple, and we also yeah. had two children together. Mm. We lived in France, we lived in Switzerland, and then we found this wonderful house that uh, that we bought in England, and uh, and where he also built a fantastic studio. He actually mm. loved that property, uh, and I loved it too. And the children, you know, they. They were there for the. They were born there, and and um, yeah, my mother was there. My family was there. It was fantastic yeah. memories from that time. Yeah. Any of your kids are musicians at all? No. Actually, uh, all my three children are really good singers. They have wonderful voices, but they are very, a bit shy. All of them. They they're really? not uh, very outgoing. <laughs> But my my son Noah, you know, which also of course is is Mike's son. Uh, he's he's a fantastic songwriter. Yeah. But uh, at the moment he is uh, he is um, doing physics. You know, he's doing his PhD physics and his doctorate uh, degree. Yeah. So he's into something completely different now, but he's he should work more with music because he he really is very talented. We need we need to send it back to uh, his dad home. To yeah, work together <laughs> when he's done with his uh, doctor, you know. So yes, that's true. That what about good. your What about your daughter? Is a musician? Uh, yes, Greta. Greta is also a fantastic singer. She has a lovely uh, soprano voice. A very nice and crystal clear, you know, beautiful voice. We actually did um, a wonderful TV uh, show in Germany uh, just a few years ago where we, we were singing on, on Christmas Eve. And I, I brought both my daughters with me and that was wonderful. The Germans loved it. <laughs> good, for, good for you, man. Good for you. So out of, yeah. the, out of that, you know, out of single release, uh, picture in the dark. You went to record the Islands album for 1987, which mm -hmm. is has several hits. Eh? The time has come. North Point, uh, when the night's on fire, and so on. So I love that, that album. Yeah, which a is a very, very album. good album. A very, very good album. Very I think it was very underrated, you know, when it came out, and uh, yeah. after many years, P people still discover that album and people love that yeah. album that 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 find it you know and so so many lovely songs on it you know i love north point i think it's a fantastic song mike is a, an amazing songwriter of course yeah um and um uh oh. All right, so we were talking about the album Island with the excellent hits, the Die Hub Scan, North Point, and When the Night's on Fire. What, what, a, what a record that is. It's a fantastic album. I absolutely love that album. It's uh, still one of my favorite albums after so many years. And yeah. and still people discover that album and love it. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Mike, of course, is a wonderful songwriter. I mean... Mm. I still love North Point. I think it's a fantastic song. Uh, I love to do these songs live, you know, on stage. And yeah. um, the audience, they love them, you know. So it's 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 a fantastic memory from that time. It yeah. was a fantastic you, start. Mike, Mike Wolf is unbelievable in in writing music, obviously, but picking, picking a particular musician to 
to sign or like like Barry Barnard. No, like, how how the person can say no? This is a Anita song. This is a Barry Palmer song. This is mm-hmm. Maggie's song, and so on and so forth. It, 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 you need to be very talented. Like, I yes. for me, it wouldn't it wouldn't make a difference. But mm. like he say, no, no, no. Anita is great for this, <laughs> but Maggie is great for that, or whatever. You mm. know, anybody. Exactly. And um, Mike is extremely good uh, at mm. that, and uh, he likes to use the the voices as instruments. Yeah, and. Yeah. Um, and he, of course, sometimes, you know, he was trying out different vocalists for a few songs. He has done done that, of course, but he always knows when it's right. Uh, that's what he yeah. used to say, you know. So, so I think, um, you know, the people who ended up singing the songs were perfect for those songs. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love it. I And I think it was wonderful to hear Kevin Ayers, you know, singing. Um, uh, flying start, you know. Yeah, wonderful. He will never find another Anita in a hundred hmm? years. He will Sorry? never find another Anita, someone like you in a hundred <laughs> years. Well, <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> what shall I say? <laughs> yeah, mm. so unfortunately, you. you know, obviously, Mike Goff is so well known for the movie Exorcist and Two Wheeler Barrels and so forth. Yes, but he he's this is only 3% of his life. The other 97 is all the mm. stuff that he got done after that. And people keep on pinging back, you know, hey, yes. tubular bells, three, tubular bells, four, five. Mm-hmm. He got done so much, much work after that, you know. So mm, He has done a lot of work after mm. that and a lot of very, very good work as well. Oh, absolutely. Many of his... Many of his instrumental works have been wonderful. I still, I also think his latest, his last album was was great that he did with Luke Spiller. You know, I think it's a wonderful album too. You know, so mm. there's no doubt that he's extremely talented. You know, and uh, and I think it's wonderful this year when he has his fiftieth anniversary in music yeah. that uh, there are so many tribute concerts to Mike around the world and I think oh, yeah, yeah. he deserves you know to to have that that's that's really great and and yeah <laughs> but Mike Mike is as far as I know he's uh, in general terms he's a very like introvert right he he doesn't want to be famous or the publicity or appear on TV or whatever you would know better than I do because you were his wife but uh, he's he's he want to be quiet, and, and and people need to respect that, you know. So some people yes. want the attention, other people, no, no, no. I, I mm. want to be quiet and doing my thing. I don't. Yes, P- people are different, you know. Some people yeah. are very outgoing, other people are not, you know. So and mm. that's that's okay. That's yeah, just how yeah. it is. He he loves his music, you know. He loves he he lives in his music world, you know. Yeah. Absolutely loves it, but yeah. Yeah, no, I I can't really say much more than that. But I I think it's um, uh, he has certainly um, contributed with a fantastic music legacy uh, oh, to, the wo- yeah. to to the world. You know, so yeah. that that is wonderful. Absolutely. Then a couple of years later, after that, you guys did um, Earth Moving, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we took in the dark, innocent, and so on. That's another yeah. very, very good album. I mean, year after year, you know, two mm-hmm. years after two years. The yes. guy is unbelievable. Man. It's and unbelievable. You were, you were and, and, also, it. and also, I love, yes, it's, I, I'm very proud, you know, to be part of that fantastic uh, time uh, because the 80s, Mike really created some magical songs, you know. Mm. It was a fantastic. Uh, my goldfield period you know and um uh no i think uh, for me it was also a very interesting musical new musical direction uh, with the irish uh, folk music you know which uh, to this day still inspires me you know it's a wonderful music direction uh, and um i love i love irish folk music and and norwegian folk music you know, my my mother and I we used to sing um, Norwegian folk songs uh, for Mike sometimes, and he used to laugh. <laughs> yeah. He 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 thought they were so funny, and and but he thought also they had some very nice melodies. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm always um, um I'm I'm so 
I'm baffled that you know my my family. Well, in general term, I I would my upbringing was kind of similar to Mike uh, because what happened with his mom. But I don't want to elaborate here. But I, I'm I'm shocked that not only Mike became very famous, but Terry and Sally, the three of them were very special, unique human uh, beings. They're all absolutely. Jokes. They're all, oh, yes. Know, unfortunately, the, the people compare them to Mike, right? So, Terry, many times yes. they say, well, you're, you're Mike's brother or Sally, you're, you know, but they're there. Yes. I, th I think that that probably is uh, kind of a little bit natural to do because, um, you know, Mike ended up having the, the biggest commercial success, you know, so then it's easy to compare the others to him. But I think, to be honest, uh, Sally uh, had a unique career as well and a, 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 a unique voice, you know, and, and oh, yeah. character, character. And 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 I, I love the start, you know, with Mike and Sally together. I thought that was oh, yeah. beautiful how mm -hmm. that started and how he also started as a bass player in with Kevin Ayers. It's uh, and my grandchild, she's now playing the bass. <laughs> she's nine. Really? Yes, and and that's so funny because you know Mike was starting on bass and she's now playing the bass, and that's really funny. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and that and she is also his first grandchild, you know. So Greta and I, we we think that's uh, that, that's um, that's nice. Yeah, mm. we need we need to send it to his house. So. You know, learn with the master from the master, you know, and guitar, yeah, and mm -hmm. the, and, um, yes, mm -hmm. and, and then, um, eventually, you end up doing the after air moving, obviously, we did very well, um, you know, in sales. Actually, I was looking at the island reaching the big position 10 in Austria, in, in Germany, in Rio, yeah. and the US, mm -hmm. okay, unbelievable. Man. And then the they last album was Kevin's. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they they were high up in the in the hit uh, lists uh, in many countries. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the these yeah. these two albums. So so very popular. We we did also a few TV shows. You know, around Europe uh, yeah. with pictures in the dark and and yeah. um, and time has come and North Point. Ooh. And uh, I also loved the bonus track when the when the nights on fire. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful song, and in a way, it's a shame that it wasn't on the album. But it doesn't really matter. It's uh, it's still a, a beautiful, atmospheric uh, track that I still love very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people mm -hmm. that buy the sort of extended edition and deluxe box can get yeah. the extra track, right? Sometimes the record label would pick the top ten song, and the other mm -hmm. great, but they wouldn't fit. You know, That's the, right. the whole atmosphere of the album and, and they end up releasing us. Uh, and then mm -hmm. the last album that you with him was Heaven's Open, right? In 91, exactly two years after, right? So, yes, which is I did, I did a lot of, uh, you know, backing, backing vocal, vocals and on a few tracks and, and some ad libs and, yeah. <laughs> which is, was, which is, was... which is very good, actually. So it's all, all of your work is very good, Anita. You're, you're very humble, but I need to tell you, you're very good. Like I told Barry Parmel when I talked to him like a month ago, people, some people are very humble, but you, you, I need to call call them out. You know, you're very good at what you do. You, 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 you were, if God exists, I suppose it does, uh, put you on this planet with this beautiful voice and good personality, and uh, and you have done well with yourself, Anita. You're a you're a very good person, Anita, as well. You know, you're. Thank you're you. You're a very charismatic that's... and good human being, Anita. So, <laughs> oh, have... thank you. That's that's very kind of you to say. I um, know. And... Oh, I really mean that. Thank Anita. you very much. <laughs> and, Anita, I, I have met a lot of crazy people in my life, so I can <laughs> I can compare and contrast, you know. So, <laughs> and, uh, oh. so, uh, so after after Heaven's Open, that was um, the last collaboration with Mike, right? And then you end up moving back to your country, I suppose, right? Yeah. Yes. Then Mike and I we we split up, and I moved yeah. back to Norway yeah. with my children. 
and uh, they have lived here, you know, their whole life. But of course, they have uh, always had contact with Mike and have visited him. And he has been to Norway a couple of times. And yeah. Yeah. And then in 1994, you end up releasing another album, your own called Voices, right? And then. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. That's where I actually met my my new um, man that um, he was an Australian sound engineer uh, called yeah. Jock Loveland. Yeah. So he's the father to my youngest daughter, Kaya. Kaya, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they all speak a lot of languages like you? They all speak English. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's very good. good. Yeah. yeah, that's very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you end up releasing another album in 2000, right? Uh, in 1999, yes, 19, 19, 19, 19, oh yes, Barney Song, that's right, that yeah. was, was a compilation of all my child songs that yeah. came out in 2000, and uh, they were very popular here in, uh, in in all of Scandinavia, and you know, people never forget them, uh, they grew up uh, with those songs, and they have them in their hearts, you know, and they they play them for their children and for their grandchildren, and it's really, really wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in 2011, you end up releasing, what, 12 years ago, uh, Starfish. That's which, right. Which also mm -hmm. which became very popular, number one, for 39 weeks, which is um, unbelievable as well. It was a huge success in Finland, and uh, also uh, it was uh, selling um uh, selling quite well as well you know and uh i i i love those songs on the album uh, they were uh, i actually was co-writing seven of those songs uh together with uh, ronilo tekra the producer of the of the album you know the famous guitarist from tnt uh so that was I really enjoyed doing that album. I love those songs. I think it's a it's a wonderful album. Uh it wasn't released physically in many in many countries, uh only actually in Norway. So uh, th that was a shame because I I should have released it, but I I just I just um <laughs> I produced it, you know, we produced it and I re released it on my record label Starfish Records. Yeah. So uh, I still I still think that album deserves to come out a bit more. So I should really work a bit more on that album. <laughs> you should, you should. How, <laughs> how, so after, um, the, not only paint, not only music is, has been an important part of your life, uh, but painting as well. When do you do you end up taking painting lesson or you learn on your own? How, how does it work? Well, I always like to 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 write and to draw and to paint when I was small, you know, yeah. when I went to school as a child. Uh, I used to sit and relax with that after uh, after maybe I had done uh, a concert, then I used to sit and draw. And uh, in 2006, uh, I was doing a lot of sewing, you know, I was sewing uh, big blankets and I was uh, sewing... Uh, um, um, like uh, like painting, but with fabrics, you know, for fifteen years, and I, I really enjoyed it. I I did so many beautiful, uh, big, uh, different different kind of projects. And in two thousand and six, I started on a canvas. I started painting on canvas, and that was a, a fantastic uh, thing to to start with. I just loved it, you know, it was like therapy for me, you know, just to sit and relax and, and do my painting. And um, I have a, a son-in-law, you know, that lives with Greta. Uh, yeah. And he's a, fa he's a fantastic painter uh, called Björge Röfjell. And Björge has been a big inspiration uh, to me uh, and has taught me a lot or uh, uh, I've been to many of his classes, or a few of his classes, and uh, he has a, a, a an art. Um, what do you call it? Uh, well, he has art classes, of course, and he also has an art school here in yeah. uh, in, uh, in near near Oslo. 
Yeah. But, so, uh, uh, go ahead. Go on, sorry. Yes. No. So I'm I'm actually going to have a new exhibition now in November. Uh, wow. Lions, uh, lions in uh, in uh, close to where I live. Uh, they they are having a a big a big uh, exhibition that I'm invited to. So that's very exciting. And but I had one, and I had one yeah. this summer as well, and and that was a a success. I I had many people coming, and and I I I, I just get so. Um, humble and and thankful and grateful for when people you know love my my uh, my paintings too and they I I just can't believe it it's it's wonderful. And you end up selling selling them the painting or? Yes, I do. Uh, I have actually sold my paintings now to is it six or seven countries wow. in Europe. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, unbelievable. It's wonderful. So I have to come to America too. <laughs> you should. Um, here, you yeah. should here, here in close to where I live in Washington D.C. There are many places um, mm -hmm. for exhibitions. Yes, absolutely. And you can do both. You can do a concert, a couple concerts, and and sell your painting as well. You know, many That's many people. True. Yes, I can I do. Uh, but when we're talking about America, then I'm suddenly remember another thing that that happened uh, a few years ago. Did you actually know that Snoop Dogg uh, actually did a version of "Schön ist das auf der Welt zu sein," the big hit? You know that Roy Black and I had in Germany when I was no, ten. No, 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 that's no he, idea. He, rec he recorded a version of that featuring Roy and Anita. <laughs> really? Yes. He did that in Germany. I think it's about uh, twelve years ago or something. Yeah, and that, that that was so cool. Yeah, Snoop Dogg is a very famous guy. He's a very yes. smart guy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I, I have seen some interviews for him. A lot of mm -hmm. people criticize him because he smoked weed or this or that, but yeah, like he's, well, he's a very sharp guy, very very smart guy. <laughs> No, he's fool. a smart guy and he's a very charismatic guy and he's he's a very talented musician of course absolutely yeah mm -hmm. and now i of course i know you're going to be um touring with opus one you have been and you're doing yes. a, 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 a gig in sevilla I'm, in a couple of weeks from now so how how the project started how the javier end up um messaging you call you and have the idea in his head Yes, I was contacted about a year ago from uh, uh, Xavier, uh, yeah. you know, the producer of of uh, this tour in in yeah. Spain yeah. that I'm very excited to to do yeah. this year. Yeah. It's starting yeah. up in in like you say in Sevilla yeah. Yeah, on the twenty twenty eighth of September in the Catuya Center City, and. Um, I'm I'm so excited, you know, to to uh, also be working again with Barry, yeah. uh, singing yeah. again, you know, on stage. He's he's such a lovely man and and talented, oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's going to be such great fun. And um, I also heard, you know, that uh, the critics were great uh, because uh, Opus One already had a couple of concerts, you know, uh, one with Maggie and one with Barry and. Uh, it was a big success, so I'm very excited. It's it's going to be wonderful. I yeah. can't wait. <laughs> you you still get nervous? Uh, oh, no, no. Not really, but not uh, really? I, I guess I guess there's always a little bit of excitement, and there should be. You know, there must be a little bit of excitement. So I'm like, I'm very excited. Very very excited. Yeah, and I will. Uh, Barry and I would like to take you. To dinner, and I will oh. be taking the dinner, uh, Xavier with his wife as well. He's a very good person. Barry is another very great human being. I, I, we did have a very good conversation like a month ago, and yes. he's a very nice person as well. You know, absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so nice, you know, to to yeah. do these uh, these wonderful songs of Mike again, and and to honor Mike, you know, in in Sevilla, and to start this tour is going to be great. Yeah, feel free to mention. Your, absolutely, feel free to mention your website, Anita, uh, where people can buy your music, your painting, and I will I will put the links in the description on the YouTube channel so people can 
get a hold of you and, and um, buy your music, get your painting and jewelry. Thank and everything. you. That's no very problem. kind. No Thank problem. you. Happy to call you. You've been you've been very good to me, Anita. So you know. So. Oh, <laughs> finally likewise. we end up talking <laughs> after a couple of messages, and um, you were sick and you were ill, and you're you're doing very yes. well. Yes. So. Yes, and uh, so finally we got to do this interview, which was well, great, and uh, yeah. and I really enjoyed talking to you, Claudio. So same here. Well, I'm quite wonderful. sure. Look forward to seeing you. I'm quite sure we'll do an, an open backstage for Opus One. I told Javier that we'll do one as well, and uh, will be great. It was very nice talking to you, Anita. Good luck. Uh, you are an unbelievable musician, painter, human being in general. You know. <laughs> you be, that's Thank, good, you. Uh, so. Thank you. Thank you. It was and, very nice uh, talking to you. Bye. And, bye. And see, see you soon. You, see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye.